Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf, where I talk about coding. Today's fun little topic that I wanna delve into with you, if you permit me, is Gatsby JS versus Next.js, which does static site generation better? Bum, bum, bum. Static site generation has been around for a while now. Ever, I think one of the first versions of static site generation was Jekyll, a framework written in Ruby that was probably the first big mainstream implementation of like an abstract framework for writing a static site. And of course, when I say static site, I mean just HTML files. And since then, that entire uh, scene community has just grown and gotten large. And today, in 2020, two of the juggernauts in this space uh, are Gatsby.js, renowned worldwide for their static site generating tool, Gatsby, and Next.js, which might sound surprising to you now, but with a recent release of Next.js 9.3, they are actually firmly in the static site generation game. So today I'm going to kind of give a overview of Next.js, well actually no, Gatsby was over here, right? Gatsby.js and Next.js and kind of give you the rundown. If you're curious, if you're thinking about making a static site and you were confused which one to choose, after this video is over, you'll have more data to make up your mind and you'll be maybe surprised about my final conclusion at the end. But for now, let's start with Next.js. Next.js is probably the closest thing that the React community has to a React framework. Uh, if you do Ruby, there's Ruby on Rails. There's literally, there's other frameworks in the Ruby land, but uh, you use Ruby to use Ruby on Rails. There's nothing equivalent in the React community and kind of Next.js gets as close to that. Next.js takes a, uh, what used to be called an isomorphic approach to rendering. An isomorphic mean that you can write a React component and it will render both on the client, just as you normally write React applications nowadays, and it will also render on the server, meaning that you get the benefit of server-side rendering with React when you use Next.js. Typically, that's really hard to set up yourself, and Next.js has just taken care of that entirely. You use Next.js, and you're up and ready to go with server-side rendered React that then gets uh, bootstrapped on the client side, and you're off running on a client side application. Uh, but because it also has this server-side element, Next.js, you can actually write an entire application with fully dynamic content. Like if you want to write your own like Twitter clone, which is a really weird example, you actually could write it with Next.js because you have server rendering, you could query your database, you can actually render things there. Um, and you have complete control over the server as well. Like Next.js actually lets you customize your Node.js server. So if you actually wanna add different features, you are fully free to do that. And one of the reasons why I'm even talking about Next.js today in com combination with Gatsby.js is due to their new release of 9.3. Uh, with Next.js 9.3, they actually brought in this next-gen static site generation support where essentially you can actually very straightforwardly create a static site with Next.js. There's new APIs that they provided that you can then use to tell Next.js how to actually make your site, but you can actually now make a fully featured uh, static site generate static site with Next.js. So let's look at the uh, Hello World example of Next.js to see what a vanilla Hello World Next.js application looks like. This is straight off their repo. So uh, if this is not the best example, then I don't know where else to get it from. Uh, you have a simple package JSON with just a few next commands, and then you go into pages, and Next.js takes a very, uh, let's say, literal approach to deciding what to render. Uh, when you have an index.js file, when this actually serves up this file, this will be served at the root of the page. Likewise with about, when you go to slash about, 
then you'll render this page. So very straightforward. This is the most vanilla example of using Next.js. And that's what I'm gonna stop now for Next.js and switch over to Gatsby. I don't know how this shirt got on me, but I guess that's what I need to do when I'm talking about Gatsby. Uh, it's weird what YouTube makes you do nowadays. Uh, so Gatsby.js is a tool built from the ground up to explicitly be a static site generator. Also uses React, no surprise there. And ever since its inception, it never pretended to try to be a server-side rendering solution. It's always been the most React-focused way to write a static site. Um, the website kind of gives you an example of how it works on Abstract. There's not much more to talk about with Gatsby because it is just uh, very laser focused on its use case. Um, one of the big differences between uh, Gatsby and Next.js though is the way in which you can customize the site. I'm gonna hold on that thought for now. Let me just actually jump to the example of Gatsby because I don't really have much to say about this part of the talk because uh, Gatsby just does static site generation. And you look at a starter, the starter default of Gatsby.js, it kind of looks very similar to Next.js. Uh, there's more files in the root, which I'm not gonna talk about right now, but you have this source folder, and then you have a pages folder, and here is where you have those same mappings of the file name to the URL. So when you have this page two example, if you go to slash page dash two, then you'll see this page on there. So you go to index.js, you can see the link to page two, and that works just like Next.js, where you can actually link to pages and go to slash about, same idea entirely. So are they that different? Yeah, yeah, they're pretty different. Uh, let's start talking about the real differences between the two. Okay, okay, N no more shirt changing. Uh, you can't see, but when I change my shirt, I actually have to change my shirt every time. So I think, I think you got the joke, right? That's enough, I can stop with that now. Uh, let's move on to the more interesting part of this conversation where I talk about the ways in which Gatsby and Next.js differ in how they manage data in your application. This is a very interesting divergence of approach. So Next.js takes a very bare bones approach to data fetching. By that I mean is that they expose some APIs that you can use that are called when a static page is generated, and that's it. Uh, so when you want to fetch data for a page, what Next.js exports are these functions in a file, and when the page is being rendered, it calls it, and then you can do whatever you want in Node land. You can use any NPM package, you can do whatever you want, read the file system, and then you just return the data, and then Next just goes from there. Uh, in the contrary, or, or in comparison, Gatsby takes a very plugin-oriented approach, where almost anything that you'd want to do with a website with Gatsby is wrapped in a Gatsby plugin, which means that if you want to read markdown files from your blog, because that's the easiest example, there is a plugin that you would use from Gatsby to do that. So. Let me show you what I mean in both these cases. Again, I'm using the built-in examples from both Gatsby and Next.js. Uh, there's no live coding in this, just gonna kind of walk you through the code as it exists. So this is the Next.js blog starter repo, or folder, I guess. The way, so let's say you wanna, so the first thing you'd wanna do, for example, when making a blog, is you wanna have a different page for every blog post, right? So here you have in, in uh, Next.js the underscore post, which is a convention made famous with Jekyll. And here's all of your blog posts you have in here. Hello World uses uh, Markdown with this thing called Front Matter so that you can uh, have metadata associated with the blog content. If you're watching this, hopefully you understand what Front Matter is. And then for each of these blog posts, you want them to be a separate page. And as we saw before, how Gatsby does pages is different files in the pages folder. But the question here is, we want to have those pages be dynamic. So how does Gatsby do, so how does Next.js do that? I hope I didn't misspeak. Uh, by kind of uh, interpolation on the, in the file name itself. 
So you're used to seeing this kind of like, you know, bracket slug in routing libraries where you say, you know, replace slug with the actual name. Uh, Next.js applied that to the actual um, pages convention. So that means that every one of the markdown files is going to use this slug. And again, what I was saying, saying about before is that Next.js exposes these functions, get static props and get static paths. This is where this get static paths, these paths is what's actually being filled in to the slug value here. And this is what I was talking about before where you can just call whatever you want in here. So this is a function that's defined in the vlog stutter itself. So I look at the top, it's coming from lib API and this get all posts is going to load and get all posts calls this. And eventually what it does is it's just reading the post folder. And this is just node. Like this is just node code. You can just read it, understand it. And that's kind of what Next.js recommends you do. So you're exposing all the paths you want to do. And then for each one that's, then for each path that you return, Next.js will render an individual instance of this bracket slug page. And every time it renders each individual bracket slug page, it's going to call get static props. And this is again calling some node code to read that markdown file parse it, parse the front matter, and then return that data that you can then use it in your React component here. And that's kind of like the straightforward approach to it. Next.js tries to kind of expose some primitives that you can use and build on top of, and doesn't really supply a lot of functionality on top of that itself, which is a trade-off. Because in, in, on one side, you have very clearly understanding what's going on here. Like you can trace the steps, like you learn three APIs, right? You learn the bracket slug thing, you learn these two methods here, get static paths and get static props, and then you're kind of off to the races. Like that's kind of it. And then of course, to do markdown and stuff, you have to then figure out how to parse that yourself uh, using libraries, like this is using gray matter to do the parsing of the markdown with the front matter. Uh, here it's using gray matter, yeah. So that's Next.js. Gatsby, on the other hand, takes a very plugin oriented approach. So I mentioned that before, about how Gatsby doesn't really expose the bare metal to you. Everything's wrapped in a plugin, which again is a trade-off because now you don't have to do a lot of implementations yourself, but now you actually have to understand how the plugin architecture of Gatsby works. So we saw before how Gatsby has source pages just like Next.js, but here you can see in this starter blog example, there's no bracket slug here. Like for each of the blog posts, if I go back to where the blog posts are, Here's the content folder. So here's the blog and here's all the files, index.md, different convention for making uh, blog posts. At least here you can actually um, co-locate the image files for the blog post next to it. And again, this is using the same convention as most modern static sites use with using front matter. Same thing as Next.js, front matter, which is YAML, and then the rest is Markdown. Very, very standard nowadays, it's pretty, much, if you don't do that, you're not really a static site generator anymore. So the question then becomes, how do these blog posts become render pages? Like where is that connection made because there's no bracket slug? Uh, the answer for that requires a lot more explanation, sadly. So the way that Gatsby manages all the contents of your static site is through an abstraction via the means of GraphQL. Uh, the Gatsby.js website actually does a good job explaining this where you have uh, pull data from anywhere. So these are all data sources. It could be APIs, it could be files, it could be um, databases. All those sources are pil pulled into Gatsby by a build step, which is powered by GraphQL. And then you can then, then Gatsby will then render that for you. And this is the part that's the hardest part of Gatsby is this GraphQL abstraction where you query all the content of your application through GraphQL, which is a bit of a mental struggle at times to understand. So let's go back to the example here. Uh, to actually have the functionality where you are pulling in these markdown files, pulling in these images, you actually have to configure Gatsby in, in Gatsby config. And here you see this array of plugins that actually configures Gatsby to pull in that data from the file system. So you have here this file system, you're saying, you know, read the file system from content blog. We saw that there. 
Um, here we're also doing source file system for assets to actually pull in just raw assets. Here's the transform for markdown. So we're saying, you know, use the file the file system plugins, use the output of the file system plugin to then transform those files to markdown. And here's the additional options that they're passing to the markdown trans, uh, plugin as well. Uh, things. Uh, here's Transformer Sharp, which lets you compress images for free. Like you just npm install this one plugin and add it here, and then you just get that. And then here's also Gatsby plugin feed, where you can actually get an RSS feed, you know, through configuration. You use the plugin, and you configure it, and you get it. So this is one part of it. We've now configured the Gatsby GraphQL query database to work. And then the second part is actually configuring Gatsby to then make these extra pages. And that requires you to drop into Gatsby node. Again, this is a lot of configuration required for this abstraction where Gatsby has APIs like Next.js that are called at the build time that allow you to configure the Gatsby build. One of those is this create pages API where it's called at build time and asks, what additional pages should I be making is what Gatsby is asking. And here it's actually querying the, gra the GraphQL abstraction that I was talking about. This is what it looks like. You're saying query for the, all, the trans, all the markdown files that I've transformed into like the parse markdown, get all of those, limit to a thousand, get me the slug and the title. And what I can do for all those posts is iterate on each of them and create a new page. Like this function called create page is exported from Gatsby itself. And every time you call this, you're making a new page, like that bracket slug this is Gatsby's ways of doing that. And here's the data that you're passing to that for it to be created. And then the component you're saying to use is blog posts, which is source templates blog posts. So I can, I can go to source templates blog post. And here's the actual React code that will be rendered with the past in data for your static site here. So that's, and there's additional queries that you're making to further get data to that page itself. And that's kind of the end of how you make a Gatsby blog. A lot of steps in direction, but also you're getting a lot of things for free because you're using the Gatsby plugin architecture. To do all these things that are defined in this Gatsby config, like having to do, you know, just reading the file system, transforming them, we saw Next.js do that. Next.js does that. It looks like here it's reading the file system and it's transforming it here. But then what it's also doing here is it's actually compressing image assets for us, which Next.js, that's a whole out of band operation, which I don't know. I don't really have an answer how, to how Next.js would do that. Here it's trying to add Google Analytics. You'd have to modify your Next.js template for that. Here you want to make an RSS feed. You have to make a new file for that. Like this just kind of gets. A lot of these abstractions gives you more power and flexibility to just get things for free with the caveat that you have to understand how the abstraction works first. Um, what's interesting, actually, right when I was preparing to make this video, I was going through Twitter as I usually do. And the biggest thing that is not the greatest about Gatsby is having to understand all the plugins. And obviously, the Gatsby team is smart and is aware of that as well. And I saw the creator of Gatsby.js post about this thing called Gatsby recipes. And this is a RFC request for comment. It's not a thing yet. This is an idea that they're thinking about, but essentially it's a way to write recipes of plugins and conventions such that to make a blog requires you to just download a file that looks like this, where it installs these plugins, installs this, and you're up and running with a blog. That's kind of like the high level idea where if this works as expected as hoped for, uh, you could then not have to worry about this plugin architecture itself. This would be a layer on top of that as well so you can get further bang for your buck in that venue. Okay, that was a lot of information that I just threw at you. You have Gatsby, you have Next.js. Uh, I call Next.js the bare bones approach. It tries to find the most minimalist APIs and just expose it to you, the developer, and then you can kind of customize it from there on out to your heart's content. Gatsby takes a plugin architecture approach where all, like the core Gatsby application itself 
has this GraphQL abstraction that via plugins you can then program to gain more powers and flexibility there. But it requires you understanding the plugins to understand which plugins you want or need to then configure them with Gatsby. And then you kind of get all a lot of things for free after that. Um, and that's the trade-off. That's my conclusion. Uh, there's, it's a trade-off. What do you want to do? Do you want to get a lot of things for free, but understanding this abstraction? Do you want to get not that much, but just kind of like the barest of APIs available? I will say this, that Gatsby was always built to be a static site. So if you truly just want a static site, Gatsby leans into that much more strongly than Next.js. But Next.js sees this as a area that they can actually provide value in and a different approach towards and also different flexibility towards. So they're allowing you to make a static site there as well. Uh, and the choice is kind of up to you. Uh, I think that you could actually get pretty far with Next.js without having to read that much. That you can read the barest of APIs and get going with Next.js. Where you're gonna hit a stumbling block is trying to add all the functionality that comes for free with Gatsby plugins. Being able to compress images, parsing markdown files, configuring um, an RSS feed, like all those things, it's gonna be like, you're gonna get up and running real fast and then it's gonna be like a very slow progress after that, is my thinking. Gatsby, it's gonna be very slow to get started, especially if you're starting from nothing. To understand how Gatsby works, its architecture, like how do you configure Gatsby, like what are the configurations from there. But once you actually get that base understanding, you have a huge Gatsby ecosystem of plugins that has so much functionality built in for free. Free, you still have to configure them a little bit. So it'll be slow to start with, but once you actually get that base knowledge, Potentially you can ramp and grow really fast. And that GraphQL abstraction is, it's weird, but once you grok it, it definitely makes sense. There's definitely power in that abstraction, uh, but it's still weird. I don't think it's not weird at all, but it, 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 seem, it, it weirdly works is kind of the conclusion there. What do you prefer? Bare bones, plugins included? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Right now, my blog itself is built with Gatsby because I've always wanted a static site and Next.js didn't have this static site feature until last month when 9.3 came out. I am curious about it because I like having that more closer to the metal experience, but the thought of having to rewrite all the functionality I get for my plugins seems also like a drag. Uh, so again, I don't know. It's a trade-off. Everything's a trade-off. There's no clear winner here and that's how I'm gonna have to leave you annoyingly enough with no real answer about what to do. You're gonna to have to think a little bit about what you think is best to do. What do you want? What are you most comfortable with? What are you going to enjoy maintaining for a long period of time? These are the questions that you should be asking yourself when taking any technology choice. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. A deep analysis, synopsis, uh, derivative, I don't know, about where static site generation is nowadays in 2020. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Share it with your friends, family, and pets. These pets don't see enough coding videos. They don't have our first coding dog yet, and that is so depressing to me. Uh, become a subscriber if you are not already a subscriber. Join my newsletter. My newsletter has so much content in there. I really need to get pump that newsletter up because there's so much good things in there. And I will see you again next week with a brand new video from me, Harry Wolf, your coding friend.